morning everyone time for a garden tour so i actually haven't seen the garden in a few days i was away and i am pretty excited to see what i've got i probably have a lot of produce that's either ready to be picked or been ready to be picked and is now overripe um but we'll deal with that when we get in the garden hi if you're new here my name is rachel and this is oxheart gardening I do a garden tour every single Wednesday where I not only show you all the pretty things I have growing but also talk about all the things that either have gone wrong or I think I could be doing better. That way you guys get a more holistic view of what a real thriving garden looks like. Dead plants and all. If you've been here before and you like my content, please like and subscribe. That does make an actual big difference to me as a creator. Um, additionally, if you really really like my content, um, I have a Patreon where you can support me and the work that I do. That link is always in the description. Uh, you can earn cool things in addition like stickers. I have a community that you can join and I also do monthly live stream Q&As where I sit down for an hour or two and answer all of your questions. So this week I did not make the mistake of only bringing one basket out. I have two. Uh, so let's go check out the tomatoes. This first row of my garden here is a cattle panel trellis with tomatoes all the way down. Uh, intermixed with the tomatoes I have these purple pole beans. Um, I believe the variety is blue cocoa. And I am just now starting to get my very first beans on this. I did plant them late. And I did that on purpose because I have noodle beans coming in in the garden and I kind of wanted to stagger the overall bean production because last year it was absolutely insane how many beans I had at once. Um, and this year I'm doing a little better but it's still a little insane how many beans I've had. Um, so I'm looking forward to having these but also hoping I don't get too overwhelmed. Some lovely Amish paste tomatoes just ready to harvest. These will go in the kitchen with all the ones that I picked before I left, which need to be dealt with. It's probably at least a big batch of salsa, potentially a batch of sauce. We'll see what I have time for. Ah, look at all of these. Usually I would pick them sooner because of this cracking that you're seeing, but since I was gone I couldn't get to them. Um, but for the most part, they look pretty good. Um, the cracking doesn't bother me as much as bug damage. Um, so I'm like, pleasantly surprised. Oh wow. Look at all of these beautiful tomatoes. I want to point something out to you guys. You might notice I have a couple of different baskets. This one I like to use for tomatoes because it is... Um, it is wide and short. Uh, tomatoes are kind of soft, right? They don't stack super well, especially when I'm harvesting other produce. And so I would rather stack them as little as possible and have more of like one or two layers so that they don't bruise because I've definitely put them in baskets before brought them in, left them on the counter for like a couple of hours, and then come back, take the ones out of the bottom, and they're all dented up from being squished in the basket. Something else interesting that I'm kind of just now thinking about, the shape of this tomato is actually kind of strange to me. I planted three different types of tomatoes. I planted Amish paste, which is this shape. I planted San Marzono, which is also sort of this shape. We'll see those in a minute. And I planted Cherokee purple, which is this shape, but is not red, it is purple. Um, so I have a couple of plants actually that are this shape and red, and I actually have no idea what they are. I have no idea. I mean, and they're a standard red tomato, so like identifying them based on how they look is gonna be kind of impossible. I'm pretty sure these seeds, um, all the seeds I, I planted this year were from seed packs uh, from Baker Creek. So, I mean, it's possible that there's a little bit of uh, cross-pollination contamination because even, you know, in the best of times, sometimes that happens. Um, but I think it's interesting that I have more than one plant making this shape of tomato this year that is not a Cherokee purple. Genetics, plant genetics, 
all of it is wild, you know? It's so unpredictable, um, which makes it kind of cool, um, but also you cannot expect that everything is gonna work out like exactly the way that you've planned it. This is one of the Cherokee purples. Um, it is cracking really bad, so even though it's pretty green, I'm still gonna pull it. Um, but yeah, this pinkish color, this is, this is more the color I expect from the Cherokee purples. So interesting. Also, this tomato could probably use it green, maybe put it in a salsa, because um, I, I want to cut off this bit as soon as possible. But usually when they're like this, the inside is fine. I've got some more Cherokee purples here that are cat-faced. Um, this faciation tends to be more common in heirloom tomatoes. Oh man, am I going to have to get my clippers? I might. There we go. So yeah, this faciation, where multiple flowers fuse together, uh, is more common in heirloom tomatoes. And a lot of the time, uh, you'll see tomatoes selected to look kind of like this, usually not this bad, for farmers markets and such, because people actually associate sort of this <laughs> shape with heirloom tomatoes specifically. Um, and so these ones who are a little bit like this, but not totally this bad, um, tend to meet people's expectations of what an heirloom tomato should look like and uh, sell better. I'm not a market gardener by any means, um, but I just know from talking to people who don't garden that their expectations of produce uh, are sometimes very different from reality because all of the tomatoes that I grow are heirloom, even the beautiful round ones that look exactly like store-bought tomatoes. Um, so heirloom is not necessarily that shape of tomato, it has to do with how long the variety has been around and uh, how it being able to um, reproduce itself. There are hybrids which uh, sometimes are sterile and cannot reproduce themselves, um, and heirlooms are varieties that were developed a while ago via different methods of genetic selection and crossing and so on that have now become stabilized and have been used for a while and so they're very reliable varieties and that's sort of why we call them heirloom because they have been passed down. It has nothing to do with the actual shape of the tomato that is being produced but like I said heirloom varieties do seem to be a little more prone to cat facing and I don't know genetically why. It is looking like I might have two baskets of just tomatoes. I am already starting to stack in here which is something that I don't want to do. So I think I'm gonna have to go get a whole nother basket and I am not even I'm not even halfway down the row yet picking. Hi Draco. Are you enjoying laying out in the morning sun? There's a monster back here. Look at this thing. Oh, that's a huge tomato. Oh, it is so unfortunate how cracked it is. We'll see if I can get usable flesh out of that later today. These ones are the San Marzonos I was telling you about. You can see that distinctive shape uh, is nothing like that round tomato that I have. I'm gonna go ahead and pull some of these nicer looking ones while they're a little less ripe to hopefully protect them from uh, what has happened to some of these other tomatoes as far as cracking. So I have with me a little mesh bag. Uh, I am planning on starting the process of saving seeds from some of the more vigorous uh, tomato plants that look healthy and productive. Um, so part of doing that is protecting the flowers from cross-pollination. That is just ensures that they will be true to type. If you were to save seeds and not protect the flowers, they would still be tomatoes. They would usually be um, not sterile seeds. They would usually be productive. Um, but this ensures that they are going to be exactly the type of tomato that you mean for them to be. Kata out here digging holes in the garden and she knows she's not supposed to. So I'm going to look for some flowers that haven't quite developed and opened up yet so that I can be positive 
that they would not have been previously pollinated. Like for example, this one that's already open could easily have already been pollinated by something. Um, so I'm going to wrap my little bag around this that isn't even fully developed and uh, watch it close for those flowers to open. Make sure I come by and uh, shake it, hand pollinate it. And then once they've been pollinated, I can remove the bag and wait for the fruit to form. And just like that. Okay, last tomato plant over here, finally. I mean, I'm not complaining about all of these tomatoes, for sure. Absolute beauties. Even though I don't know what they are. Oof, and sometimes you pick tomatoes that look like this. I don't usually try and get any of the flesh off of things that look this bad. Alright, well this is all of the tomatoes that I harvested, I actually need to go drop these off inside before I can use my baskets to harvest anything else. All right, with tomatoes dealt with, we can move on to the second row. Um, I have sweet peppers here, corn here, and some basils and a marigold. Uh, this is actually the only marigold that I have. I tried to start a lot and uh, I then when I put them out, didn't water them like I should have. And so this is the only one that was strong enough to survive my neglect. Um, anyways, so I have basils here I've been pulling from. Uh, it's probably almost time to pull again, which is wild to me. Um, but so I've got basils and sweet peppers and I'm going to shimmy my way into that jungle without uh, disturbing you guys on the camera too much. All right, on the other side of the pepper jungle now. Uh, from here, I can kind of look in and see if there's any peppers, I think I am between flushes right now. So with things like peppers and beans, um, you get fruit in flushes. So the plant will grow, it will put on some flowers, set some fruit. Once you pick that fruit, the plant will then grow up bigger again and put on more flowers and kind of in stages, rounds, flushes. Um, and so I think right now I'm in between flushes. I recently pulled a bunch of peppers and the plants are now in the grow, get bigger, make more flowers stage. I just love this one purple basil that I put in the middle of all my peppers. It looks so healthy. I love the color. Um, and it's also very much not affected by whatever disease my peppers have. Um, I've been mentioning it quite a lot. I still have not had a chance to perform the necessary experiments to verify uh, that it is what I think it is. Uh, but hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I will be able to do that and then start taking a definitive action against it. I'm on the other side of the tomato trellis and it looks like, <laughs> it looks like I missed a few. Oh man. Again, not complaining, but sometimes dealing with the amount of produce that comes out of the garden is a little overwhelming. I want to make sure that I use everything uh, to its potential and I don't waste any of it by letting it go bad. Um, and so I just, I look at all this produce and I am grateful, but also I think about all the time and effort that goes into preserving it. And on top of being really busy with work, sometimes it feels like there's just not enough time in the day to make sure that all the produce gets used in the most effective way. Look at all these Tabasco peppers. They haven't started turning yet, but I just love the way this plant looks. This is so cool. Um, and the, for those of you who didn't know, Tabasco peppers are actually more different than other peppers. A lot of peppers that you will normally grow are from Capsicum anum, um, and Tabasco peppers are from uh, Capsicum fructens, um, which means that they are more genetically different from uh, all the peppers in the Capsicum anum what is the word? Family? I'm not sure. Uh, so I think that's really cool. It's a nice little um, 
genetic tidbit to know about these really interesting looking peppers. And there actually are not a lot of peppers in this family that are um, available for growing. Checking in on my beautiful fish pepper. There are a few ready to harvest. These, I absolutely love the size and spice of these for curries. Chop one up with the seeds and throw it in with the um, ginger and garlic as you're getting started with the base of the curry sauce. Oh, it is awesome. All right, back out to the front again. We're gonna go down the other side with the corn. Um, before we do that, I wanna show you guys um, an update on the experimental cabbage. Uh, you can see here these older leaves that have gotten dark and green and then the newer leaves, which are this like powdery purple. Um, so it is still making leaves and I'm interested to see what it'll do once the weather cools off and is actually uh, more ideal for it. This is, this feels like a little baby cabbage that it is making for me in here. It's so interesting. Corn is tasseling in full force now. There are bees doing their best to pollinate and I've got my baby corns forming down here, hopefully getting super pollinated by all of this pollen that is falling down from the tassels at the top. My kale that was looking awful last week looks even worse this week. Um, I'm not sure if these harlequin bugs are solely to blame or if it's a combination of that and the heat but there are certainly a lot of them on here. So I'm kind of thinking that these guys did my kale in. It's a little sad, but um, it existed long past when I expected it to. So I'm not like fully heartbroken, but it's good to know that this bug exists as a pest for this particular plant. I have this beautiful nasturtium that continues to grow. Um, I actually don't do a lot with the flowers. I like having it around because it's beautiful and it is another source of flowers for pollinators. Um, but all of it is technically edible. Uh, it's got a little bit of a peppery taste to it. Um, but for me, it is mainly aesthetic and I like knowing that I could eat it if I uh, really wanted to, or if I really wanted to make something gorgeous, uh, have some edible flowers on hand to add to that. I have, ooh, that one is longer than I thought. I have a bunch of eggplant that are ready to harvest. Let's see if I can do this left-handed while holding you guys. Whoa. My left hand is not strong enough. There we go, okay. Yeah, eggplant stems, very thick. These have been beautiful, amazing producers. Um, got a video coming out soon showing you guys how to determine when to harvest these, and uh, also my favorite recipe to, ooh, to make with them. So I have three eggplant recipes that I absolutely love making, but I am at the point where there's so much eggplant that I'm getting bored of those recipes. So if you guys wanna send me your favorite eggplant recipes, that would be really fun to try out something new because I cannot think of a good way to preserve eggplant. Right in front of me, keeping me from harvesting the rest of my eggplant is my turnip jungle. I have not been doing a very good job pulling these to eat and clear out this space because I have had so much other fresh produce to eat that um, these are like kind of last on the list. Um, and then of course I've got potatoes here and sweet potatoes in between fighting for their life with the um, turnips. I think I'm gonna have to step on the turnips to get to the eggplant. Oh well. These Antigua eggplant, I think I've heard people call them fairy eggplant as well. They are just <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. Total eggplant haul for today. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So my first trellis here with dying cucumbers and just now arriving pumpkins is looking kind of neat. Um, I like that these are little yellow orange globes hanging here, even though the rest of the vines are dying. Um, I think it looks very pretty. And these, I've been meaning to save the seeds from these. 
I think they're fine just hanging out here for a while and I don't really have the time so I'm going to leave them be for maybe another week or so until things calm down. I do want to point out with the pumpkins here that uh, I've been seeing only male flowers and this is what a male flower looks like. It just has a long stem and a flower and if you ever see a female flower um, it will be very obvious there will be a baby fruit at the base of the flower and what needs to happen is pollen from the male flower has to make it to the female flower for that fruit to be able to grow into an actual big edible thing. Um, so the fact that I'm not seeing any female flowers means that I currently cannot get any fruit from this plant. There are a few different reasons why the plant might not be making female flowers right now. Um, nutrients might be one of them, water might be one of them, and of course the heat might also be one of them. I am going to try giving them a little boost of nutrition and see how that goes. Um, but aside from that and trying to regularly water, if these decide not to make any female flowers, then there's not a lot that I can do about that. Interestingly, um, this plant here, which is not a pumpkin, it is a uh, butternut squash, does have a female flower on it. You can see that fruit with the flower right there. Um, and this plant is not that big. It doesn't look super healthy. So it's very confusing to me as to why this one would have a female flower and my big, beautiful pumpkin would not. And then moving on to the second trellis, which is my fairy tale trellis, I have a bunch of old noodle beans that are about ready to be picked to be dried for dried beans inside. Um, if it's not going to rain, I can also wait for them to dry out here. Um, but because the rain here seems to be so inconsistent and hard to predict, I'm probably going to pull them and let them dry out inside. Uh, and I know that they're ready for that because you can see the casing has gotten kind of loose and I can feel that there's like an actual hard bean inside there. Noodle beans are really cool in that they are good producers of both fresh and dried beans in my experience um, and I have gotten overwhelmed by how many of them there are so that is why I am just leaving them <laughs> to save for dried beans because it is a delay of work for me. I can dry these indoors and then I can wait like a month or two to actually shell them and save the beans out of them. We are at the front of the last row right now. I want to take a moment to illustrate uh, how important adding compost or organic matter to your soil is. This sweet potato was planted right here. You can see this is mostly just clay right here. Um, this is part of the garden I did not compost. I just put mulch on top of to keep it as like a clear walkway. And I put this sweet potato here because I had too many slips and I didn't know what to do with it. I felt bad not planting it. Um, but you can see it is not very big. It's not very healthy as opposed to the other sweet potato in the middle of the garden. Even though it's competing with a ton of other plants, its leaves are like as big as my hand compared to these little leaves. Um, so it being planted here without any compost to feed on has been a real detriment to it, I believe. Over here, the peppers were a little behind the others, so I am just getting my first flushes off of these. This is um, a Malawi pepper, sometimes called Pepidou pepper. Um, and so I am very excited for these to ripen. These are one of my best friend's favorite pepper. Uh, so I'm growing them just for her. And right next to it, I have an Anaheim pepper, which I think my very first Anaheim is ready. Oh no, sad. Uh, I'll probably cut that off and still use it. I actually really like uh, roasting these until in the oven until the skin falls off and then um, breading them and stuffing them with like a bunch of cheese and then uh, frying them to make I guess like little poppers. But Anaheim, it's a really low spice pepper. It's really good for that. This one right here is the golden honey and it is making these cute little snacking sweet peppers. They are pretty sweet, um, but the walls are sort of thin, so it's not like the most satisfying sweet pepper to eat in my opinion. And even though they are gorgeous, I am not sure if I will go through the effort of growing them again. 
but they are sweet. Like the honey name is quite applicable. They do make a pretty good garden tour snack. My little pumpkin pepper seems to finally be ready for harvest. Look at that. Isn't that just the cutest little thing? I'm pretty sure this is a spicy pepper. Um, it, the seeds were given to me. I didn't buy them. So I'll have to test it and see, but I'm pretty sure it's spicy. Last year, my partner Devin and I did a pepper tasting video where we tasted all the different hot peppers in the garden, uh, kind of in the style of hot ones. So it was half hot pepper tasting, half interview. Um, if you guys want to see that again this year, let me know. Um, but this would definitely be an interesting pepper to have on the agenda for that. As we go further down, we have the um, very weird Brussels sprout that never went to flower. And we have acorn squash, uh, which are kind of looking done. Well, the skin is still a little soft. Last week I mentioned that winter squash and summer squash are not like actually different uh, categories of squash. They are the same-ish. Um, so you can actually wait for a summer squash to harden its shell and uh, store it like a winter squash or like a winter squash you could pick it early and eat it like a summer squash. Um, the thing I didn't clarify last week though is that um, this is not usually the optimal way to use these vegetables. Um, they have been genetically selected for the specific uses that we use them for. And so a summer squash, while it is possible to grow it out and store it as a winter squash, it might not be as tasty as you would expect, and it might not store as long as you would expect other winter squash to store, and uh, vice versa with the winter squash harvesting early, they might not be maybe as sweet as you would want or have the texture that you want. Um, perfectly edible for sure, um, just not always the ideal situation. However, there are a ton of interesting squash varieties out there and uh, feel free to experiment with some of the interesting ones that you find because these rules are not like set in stone and I really like encouraging people to experiment with their produce and find out what they like. All right, before we go, we've got a couple more things to check in on. The raised bed herb garden. I would say it looks about the same. Nothing super interesting happening over here. However, if we look up at the berry patch, I have a brand new trellis. I put this up last week um, and I did it alone. So I have the bruises on my arm to prove it. They are just now starting to fade. Um, yeah, I probably could have been more patient and waited for someone to help me, but I was not patient and I just wanted it up and out of my way. So this trellis is for my blackberries and raspberries. It is a little shorter than I want it to be. I would have liked it to be a foot farther in either direction. Um, we'll see if I have to do anything to <laughs> remedy that as these plants get bigger. But I noticed they had started dragging on the ground and I was like starting to mow over the tips of them, uh, hanging out the edges. So I knew it was time for the trellis to go up. This strawberry that was eaten basically all the way down by a deer at some point is looking fine. This is all one strawberry plant and its runners. Here's the epicenter. Uh, you can see its tendrils coming out uh, and the rest of these are doing fine. They are mostly rooting and I'm trying to direct them this way and this way, not into the lawn. Um, and so hopefully next year this will continue to spread and I eventually want it to spread all the way across here as like a living ground cover because I have had a big issue with uh, grass kind of taking over and having to pull all of those weeds. So hopefully a big thick bed of strawberries will help mitigate that at least a little bit. I might also let clover like this grow as well because it's a really nice short ground cover. Um, I just don't want the Bermuda grass really taking over. It is uh, vigorous and will choke things out. So I'm trying to keep the grass away while keeping the ground covered in some way. Creeping thyme might also be an option that I would consider for something like that. 
Uh, but we'll see. This this is a developing situation. All right, guys. Well, that is it from me today. Uh, if you're new here, I do this every single Wednesday, so check back next week. And if you want to catch up on previous garden tours, I've got playlists for it last year and this year right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all of your support in the comments on Patreon. You guys are just balls of positive energy coming at me, most of you most of the time, um, and I really appreciate it. I understand that the internet can be a very uh, negative place sometimes, but the people who come to my channel by and large have been positive and helpful and I really appreciate that. Until next time, I wish you all happy gardening.